final meeting on overcrowding in Moses Lake schools drew a lot of people last Thursday. It also drew a lot of opposition to one idea in particular. Ryan Lancaster has the story. Prior to last week's final public meeting on overcrowding in the Moses Lake School District, some students and supporters of Columbia Basin Secondary School met along Broadway Avenue to voice their opposition to the school's closure. The restructuring of CBSS was perhaps the least popular of four final options on the table at Thursday's meeting. Many in the crowded auditorium at Moses Lake Civic Center spoke up against the idea, with most favoring instead option number one, do nothing, or option four, moving the district to a year-round calendar with a staggered schedule for students. School officials have held a number of meetings and offered an online survey to try to come up with a way to deal with secondary overcrowding. But many in the community are worried school officials have already made up their minds to close the alternative school program at CBSS. One student spoke about how much the school means to her personally. We have been active. I've been at the school since sixth grade and it's like another home to me. The possible closure of Columbia Basin Secondary was undoubtedly the major concern of those present. One woman seemed to speak for many when she said it all comes down to option one being the only proposed solution that leaves the alternative program intact. People can still give input on the issue prior to this Friday, March 28. Either at that school board meeting or the April 11 meeting, the board will be given a final presentation. Whichever option is chosen by the school board, none of them will go into effect until next school year. For i one News, this is Ryan Lancaster reporting with Robert Ryder. Thanks, Ryan. Grant County PUD is looking at a new $7.6 million building for its hydro engineering office. The commissioners recently reviewed bids for the project at Wanapum Dam. The 35,678 square foot building will re replace an existing collection of scattered facilities that house a variety of district offices. PUD staff determined that the best solution was to build a new facility rather than try to remodel the existing facility, saying that a remodel would cost $1 million more than new construction. Along with more efficient office space, the building will contain 2,000 square feet of unfinished space for a hydro and fish interpretive center. Turning now to Northwest News, the Washington State Legislature has approved a measure recognizing March 30th as a day to honor Vietnam veterans. The House unanimously passed the measure last month, and the Senate unanimously passed the bill Monday. The bill makes this Saturday Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Day. While not recognized as a legal holiday, public entities will be required to fly the prisoner of war and the missing in action flag on that date. The bill now goes to Gover Governor Jay Inslee for his signature. A small number of bars, cafes, and private clubs are starting to cater to the new stoner class in Washington and Colorado in the wake of legalization. Both states prohibit the public use of marijuana, and most bars are steering clear of allowing pot use at least until officials come up with rules for the new weed industry, according to the Associated Press. But a few establishments are trying various strategies to allow on-site consumption, trying to drum up business while making a political statement. The Associated Press reports some are forming private clubs, while others are getting around a smoking ban by letting patrons use vaporized marijuana. Regulators are watching closely as they begin to write the rules to oversee the fledgling industry. And finally tonight, nearly everyone knows what it's like to stand in line at the register, but the shoppers of the future might not be so lucky. The Associated Press has the story. Salespeople who used to be tied to a cash register now roam the clothing aisles at JCPenney in New York. If you get a chance, we have a sale price is really good, so follow me if you want to. I can show you. It started several years ago at the Apple stores. Now, retailers across the country are rolling out mobile checkout devices. I think it's great. It, uh, it makes checkout a lot quicker, and I'm on my lunch break at, from work, so faster the better. The salesperson who comes in first contact with the customer can quickly close the sale with an iPod touch, leaving buyers with little chance to second guess the spending. Cash sales are still done at a register, but managers are slowly moving those transactions to small service counters. I think the, as you see it right now, these big terminals are going to be gone. Um, you really won't see them anymore. We're going to be able to now use the space for 
our new shops coming in. It's happening across the shopping spectrum. Upscale retailer Barney's okay. has removed the cash registers from the jewelry counter. Most transactions in the store are now done with an iPad or an iPod touch. Retail strategist Al Sambar says it's all about increasing dollars per square foot. I do that by improving my customer experience. Can I let this customer shop me in a richer way? Can I allow them access to more of my assortment than I can offer just in the physical square footage I have? In the next few years, he says the devices will personalize shopping in physical stores like never before to compete with the online shopping experience. Ted Chaffrey, Associated Press, New York. And that's going to do it for us here at iFiber One News. Thank you for watching and have a great night.